What's good, YouTube? Thank you for tuning back into the channel. This is going to be an informational and unboxing video. In drag racing, races are usually won or lost in the first half of the track. So today I'll be talking about setting up the chassis and rear suspension of the Mustang. In my previous video, my first priority was removing the excess weight. I pretty much stripped it down to a bare shell because if I didn't need it to make the pass, I removed it. I'll also be installing fiberglass panels, Lexan windows, running one Kirky seat, a small three gallon fuel cell and no intercooler because I plan on running methanol fuel, as well as lightweight brakes to keep the weight down. The reason why I emphasize in weight reduction so much is because the lighter you are, the faster your potential at a given power and it's easier on parts. A great example would be running or doing a relay race running from point A to point B and timing yourself, then repeating the same race, but with an extra 50 pounds. Obviously, you'll be faster without the extra weight. Next, you should stiffen up the chassis. The Fox Body Mustang is a unibody car. You can do this by adding subframe connectors. This will help prevent twisting during hard launches. Depending on how fast you plan on going, Adding roll bars or a roll cage can help strengthen the chassis and add safety for the driver. As you can see here, the roller I bought already had subframe connectors and an 8 point roll bar installed. The stock torque boxes were fully welded in, but the issue with that was the lack of adjustability. Being able to adjust your instant center is everything for launching. That's why I bought adjustable torque boxes from Marty Marilot Racing. Here is a quick unboxing I did. So we also picked this up during the Black Friday sale. These are upper and lower torque boxes from uh, Marty Merlot. I got them on a good deal during his Black Friday sale. So I picked them up since I'm doing the chassis over. boxes right here baby look at these things All right, guys, so here is the upper torque boxes, adjustable torque boxes, and here's the lower that I'm going to put on my son's car. Interesting. So the whole point of having adjustable upper and lower control arm mounts, um, you're able to tune to your track surface. You're able to change the instant center right away. Here I found a good image that represents a Fox body stock style suspension geometry with a triangulated forelink. The first measurement you'll need to find is the instant center and the 100% anti-squat line. The instant center is where the upper and lower control arms intersect. The 100% anti-squat line is a diagonal line coming from the rear tire's contact patch to the center of the camshaft roughly. If the instant center is on an anti-squat line, that means it's in neutral position. If you can get it to hook up in this setting, it will usually produce faster ETs because it's not wasting horsepower and time doing wheelie stands. Its stored energy is concentrated on moving the car forward.
This next image shows having the instant center more than 100% anti-squat line or rear anti-squat. The control arms are intersecting above the line, thus causing the tires to dig further into the ground and the body to separate. Just like anything, having too much of anything is not a good thing. This can cause excessive wheelie stands, which is wasted energy when you're trying to accelerate. This last image is the total opposite. The instant center is below the line which causes the car to squat and lose traction. Finding a happy medium will produce the quickest times. Testing and tuning and collecting data is key. Don't be sending me the voicemail. <laughs>